Thak from Thak Iron Works. Uh, I, in the last video, I said that it, the, the next and last video would be the spear. I lied. I'm um, actually doing the little skirt thingies, which are called pierogies. Pierogies? Pierogies. Um, once again, butchering the pronunciation. I'm sure someone will point out the correct pronunciation for it. Anyway, these are the little um, strips that hang down for the skirt of the armor, also coming off of the sleeves. Uh, and that's something that was used in Greco-Roman armor. The Greeks and the Romans both used it, and then it was used at other times in the Middle Ages and, and stuff as well. Uh, I'm putting it in there. It just seems to finish off the costume. Again, I'm not going totally historically accurate. I'm looking at a couple of sources, and, you know, everything is very... When you're looking at vases and statues and stuff like that, you're looking at their artist's interpretation, so I'm not really sure what we're looking at. I was, from what I read, they probably started out as linen, the linen coming off from the gambeson or the brigadine, whatever you call um, that piece, and then um, later probably leather, and they became more decorative as we moved into the Roman era. For my hoplite one, I've decided I'm going to do something utilizing bronze, since that is my favorite flavor, especially for this suit here. Um, and I wanted to do some fobs on the end of this to help hold that leather in place, keep it from curling up and, and that sort of thing. So I want to make these guys, I needed a bunch of them. So what I went and did was build a little die block for that. And this is the one for the skirt. But what I'm going to show you is how I did that. And I'm going to make a smaller version of this for the sleeves. Um, so I've got some bits and pieces here. Um, let's dive right into it. Okay, so I've quickly tacked together a bunch of little pieces to create that shape in a smaller size, about two-thirds um, of what that one is there. So now everything was tacked together and I used my little MIG for that because it's nice and um, small and light. I can get in and get the tacks in there. Now I want to move over to my big MIG and weld this in solid, get some good penetration, and then I need to grind it flat to create the surfaces here, fill that all in. So. Um, let's get right into that. All welded, now lots of grinding. So to the vise. Okay, that took, I don't know, about an hour with all the cutting out and grinding and all that stuff just to build this little block. So uh, built at a fairly fast pace, but I'm not trying, this doesn't have to be um, super precise jewelry level detail here. This is just kind of an afterthought. And um, I, if you've watched my videos before, I always talk about time being part of the equation of any given art project. You have to factor in how much time are you willing to spend or able to spend um, to achieve a certain look. And sometimes more time is not always better or, or needed or not, not necessary. In this case, this will be barely looked at. It's just part of the overall um, whole of the suit. And uh, this sort of detail doesn't have to have a whole lot of real high precision, I find. So anyway, it will be fine for making a bunch of um, similar pieces. They'll basically be um, the same thing and it will work fine for that. Now, what I've got is a bunch of pieces of scrap bronze and little bits and pieces that I've got here. And I'm just gonna clamp this into place. I've just annealed them, brought them up to an orange heat and then quenched it. So it should be super soft now. Now the Key is trying to utilize as much of this scrap as possible. So I'm just going to kind of get it on there, clamp it on. I'll take my raising hammer and just start tapping gently and establishing the perimeter. Now I've got my basic depth um, set there. I've got it roughed out. I've got a pretty blurry image. What I'm gonna do now is get a dull cold chisel and come in and start refining and defining. So with a little chisel work, I've achieved sufficient detail there 
still very distressed rustic look at what that's the entire suit is like that so it, it's in keeping with that I'm just now going to trace out the cutout area now we'll trim that out Got it bent down there. I might have to anneal this. It's, it worked hard in a little bit there. Also, I'm gonna grind away these corners. It's got a bit of a bottle cap look there. I need to grind those away. This is gonna fold down around the leather. You'll see. All right, so I templated for my skirt, tarogis, tarogis, tarog. Anyway, I got a template for that and everything was based off that for the original ones. That is the skirt there. The sleeve ones, I'm just guesstimating that I'm going down 30% uh, to make those. So this will no longer fit, but I think if I just move up and I cut that off and let's see what I get for a template then. And that coming up, tying in there, and that comes right down onto my delt. That should be, eh, good enough. All right, let's call that the template then. So now we have our template, which we can trace out onto some leather. We're not doing super fine leather work here, but uh, we'll do a little bit of cleanup on the edges. And also, I'm gonna use my stitch groover here and just put a line. Um, it's gonna get stitched onto the belt up here so that it will actually serve its purpose up here, but we'll just bring it all the way down. And we'll do two runs there, deepen that up a little bit. So really quick decorative stuff for the leather there. And that's as much as I'm gonna do. Once we dye that, that line should come out darker and look really sweet. Something like that. Now I got a lot more of these to do. All right, we're just gonna quick demo um, some of the finishing techniques I'm gonna be doing for this. As is typical, I will be gun bluing the bronze and then brushing it out with some steel wool. Try not to get it on the leather. It's pretty weak acid. It's not really gonna affect it too much. I'll be rinsing it off. But don't want to harm it. I don't have to. So that darkens right up. I'm going to dunk that in some water, buff out the highlights. And we've got the bronze now. Um, I've got two leather dyes. I've got a medium and a dark brown. Which I want the leather, all the leather on this outfit to be brown. I'm going to start with the medium because I can always go darker. And in fact, I might use combination of the medium and the dark to give more of a mottled effect. I don't like monochromatic stuff. Okay, so that's super dark as it's wet here. That's gonna dry out quite a bit lighter. So in anticipation of that, I'm just gonna come in with the dark stuff and just put some random Watches. And we'll just have to see how that dries out. Anyway, you get the effect. Um, I think that looked pretty cool. I'm happy with it. Now I've got a lot of pounding. Pound out the other seven pieces of bronze for the, the sleeves. And then I got a pile of leather work to do, so let's get into that whole thing. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to make a sort of leather gorget that these things are gonna be mount mounted onto. 
as opposed to doing a whole, like say, leather tunic where they would be coming off of uh, that whole thing. I just, I don't want to get all that leather underneath the armor and get all sweaty and that sort of thing. I just want to keep uh, like a fabric tunic, but I, but I don't want to sew these things onto a fabric tunic. Anyway, long story short, I've decided I'm just going to do the sort of gorget harness sort of thing that goes here and then it will be the belt. Um, down below that will hold that in place. So I'm just going to template for that. I'm just going to just do this at rapid pace. This laptop, right? I think it was. Yeah. So you're paying that dope. Who's that guy with a toilet seat around his neck? All right, not the finest piece of leather work I've ever done, but it's going to be underneath and not really seen. Uh, what I need to do now is soak down the leather and mold it into shape of my bande and then uh, of course the lace will go in there so I'll, I'm gonna get that soaked down and uh, um, all prepped up and then I can just sew my pieces on there after progress progress yes all right I decided not to do a buckle on this belt because I wanted it to be underneath the breastplate and I thought something like that might be a little clunky for banging against the inside of the breastplate. This might be a little more discreet having these little D-rings here and a lacing that I can then kind of corset this shut and tuck my love handles in as I need depending on my current level of fatness. So that's the belt. Okay, not really a leather working channel, but I'll just briefly show you my approach to this. I've got my little stitch spacer here. It looks like a spur. And I just put it into the stitch groove. Press down. And that shows me where the holes go. And then I take my awl and punch out the holes. Exciting stuff. And then I've got those holes punched. Now I've got those marked as I did it and I punched those out. And then with two needles, I stitched that together. I'm not going to bother showing that. In about five minutes, I am going on vacation for a week. First vacation I've had in two years since this whole stupid pandemic started. So I'm gonna be uh, at a cottage and I decided I'm gonna take this stuff along with me and my stitching stuff and I can sit by the lake in the morning and do some leather stitching and then when my fellow cottagers walk by they can say what are you doing and I will say I am Thack and I am sewing my skirt. I'll let you know how that works out. See you in a minute. Almost forgot. Uh, soaked the gorget and now I have just taped it onto this uh, argon cylinder here and leave it dry for a couple days like that and then it should take uh, more or less the right shape. Two weeks have elapsed. I am back from vacation. I've been back for a week actually and I had a great time, thanks for asking. Um, and during that time I did sew my pieces on. I got my skirt and I've got my gorget portion here. So all the pieces are sewed on. Um, all I need to do now is to do some touch up. You can see I did a little bit of antiquing on the one. I like that effect um, going for that very distressed look on, on this suit. So uh, I'm just gonna start with that and um, show you how I do so with just a little bit of sandpaper. And there we have it, uh, not much more to explain. It's fairly self-evident what we're looking at here. So those pieces are ready. And now, I know I've said it before, but there's only the spear to do. And now I actually mean it. So that's our one last item in the Greek Hoplite kit. 
and we'll be shooting that video over the course of the next couple of weeks. There's a couple of components in there, a couple of separate components. Uh, so please stick around for that. Uh, okay, you know the drill. Do the comments and the thumbs up and the bell notification and check out our Patreon, all that stuff. Appreciate you guys hanging in. We are so close to the end now. Stick around, back out. See ya!